all praise is due to Allah. We praise him and we seek his help and ask his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil results of our actions. I testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad is his slave and final messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon the last and final messenger Muhammad, his family and his followers. I would also like to begin by acknowledging this land on which I live and work. For thousands of years it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. Muslims know the ravages of colonialism, and therefore I believe that in Canada, we must be part of restorative justice to the Indigenous peoples, which is why I give this land acknowledgement. I'm going to share with you two scenarios. I have overheard from colleagues and friends about shopping. Then you can tell me which one is closer to Islamic morality. In the first incident, I overheard a colleague talking about how she accidentally forgot to pay for something. She was walking out with the trolley and she realized she had the item and hadn't paid for it. She ran back to the shop to pay. In the second incident, a colleague was bragging about how a cashier had charged her for less than the ticket price and how she rushed home and managed to get this item for less than it was supposed to be. Which one of these two scenarios do you think is closer to Islamic morality? If you're thinking the first scenario, you are correct one where you didn't pay for something and you ran back and paid for it. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am honoured to be part of your conference. I pray you have a successful weekend, that you learn and be inspired, that you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which virtue was the first scenario about? It was about honesty. Today my main message is very simple. We live in a corrupt world full of war, chaos and inhumanity. We can't always make changes at the global level, but we can strive hard to be a moral person ourselves, even if those around us are not. We look to the Quran and the Sunnah to understand how we should behave, what morality is for us. In the first five chapters of Surah Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, we read, quote, This is the book in which there is no doubt, a guide for the righteous, those who believe in the unseen, perform prayer and give from what we have provided for them. Those who believe in the book in which there is no doubt, a guide for the righteous. When asked about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his character, his wife Aisha, replied that he was the walking Qur'an. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a mercy to all the worlds. I opened with a story about honesty. I'm going to talk more about honesty and I'm going to talk about two more. I'm going to talk about kindness and backbiting. The first two are things that we should do, honesty and kindness. The second, the last one, the third one, is the one thing, one of the things we should not do, which is backbiting. These are situations we encounter on a daily basis. Maybe they don't feel grand like big things, but in the scale of our deeds on the Day of Judgment, they are very important. Okay, let's talk about honesty. In Canada, in the movie theatres, you can buy a soft drink here they call it soda or pop. You buy actually an empty cup and then you go somewhere else to fill it. In some restaurants, you can do what's called a free refill, which means you can go back and fill up as many times as you want. The movie theatre has a big sign that says no free refill, which means, which means you're meant to go back and pay if you want a second and a third drink. 
Sometimes my kids, when they were young, tried to pressure me. Let's just go and get a free refill. They're a big corporation. They're making thousands of dollars. The tickets are overpriced. No one will notice. But who would notice if you went back and got a free refill when you were supposed to pay? You yourself would notice. Your shoulder angels who are taking account of your deeds would notice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would notice. We read in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 29. Oh, you who believe, do not consume each other's wealth illicitly, but trade by mutual consent. Let's think about it. The theater buys soda from a vendor, puts it in the machine. If you drink without paying, you are consuming something that they paid for. They did not give it to you as a gift. So it is illicit drinking. It's a form of stealing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to be honest at all times, but especially during business transactions. In Surah al mutafifin those who deal in fraud, chapter 83, verses 1 to 6, we read, Woe to the defrauders! Those who, when they take a measure from people, they take in full. But when they measure or weigh to others, they cheat. Do these not know that they will be resurrected for a great day? So we must be honest, even if no one will notice. Doesn't it remind you of the hadith, the saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that defines ihsan or excellence? Ihsan is to worship God as though you see him. And if you cannot see him, then indeed he sees you. Let's talk now about kindness. You see around you a world right now lacking in one simple quality kindness to each other. The word is easy to say, kindness, but it turns out that it's not always easy to do. Our egos, our self-love, our negative character traits like jealousy, greed, revenge, impatience can make kindness less appealing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands kindness again in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 36. Quote, worship God or worship Allah, ascribe no partners to him, be kind to parents and relatives and orphans and the poor and the neighbor next door and the distant neighbor and the close associate, the traveler and your servants. God does not love the arrogant show off. This then means we need to self-reflect and cultivate kindness as a characteristic. We need to practice it daily. Note when we slip up, apologize when needed and wake up the next day aiming to do better. Finally now, number three, backbiting. One of the most popular songs in my hometown of Perth, Australia, where I first encountered Islam in 1991, was by Paul Kelly. The song was called Gossip. The chorus went like this. Gossip, gossip, give us this day our daily bread. Gossip, gossip, it makes the world go round. I had suffered from gossip in high school for years. So when I first started learning about Islam, I was instantly drawn to this verse. It's in Surah Al-Hujarat, the Chambers, chapter 49, verse 12. It goes like this. O oh, you who believe, avoid my suspicion. Some suspicion is sinful. And do not spy on one another, nor backbite one another. Would any of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would detest it. So remain mindful of God. God is relenting, most merciful. 
I recognized this instantly when I heard it as divine guidance. Backbiting is to say something about another person they wouldn't like you to say, even if it's true. If it's not true, it's slander. Comparing backbiting to eating one's own brother's flesh, it sounds so extreme. Whereas in society, we think of talking behind each other's back as a little thing. It's normal. It's gossip, perhaps unavoidable. Only a true religion would teach us that this behaviour destroys bonds of love between people and ruins unity. Again, like the other morals, it is easy to say don't backbite, but it is hard to do especially if we feel offended or hurt by someone. I want to close again by saying my main message. The world around us is corrupt, chaotic, revengeful and violent. Even if we cannot do anything about that, we can at least work on ourselves. I've shared with you three moral traits. Two we should do, be honest and be kind and one we should not do, backbite. I know these traits are easy to say and hard to do. So let's do our best and wake up each day resolving to be honest, kind, and not backbite. Thank you. I pray you have a lovely conference. Inshallah, I'm honoured to be part of it. Assalamu alaikum.